Today we're going to look at PowerShell Just Enough Administration. Now we're going to go in as our user Raj here and he's going to go in using the configuration name printer group. So what we've done is we've already assigned some permissions and we're just going to go in and show that he has the ability to restart a service. Um, in this case he's able to restart the pool service only. But as you can see you've got a couple of default commands like get commands, uh, you've got some measuring and uh, get service because it's good to know if the service is even running. So this is the state that we're at and we're going to show you now how to get to that state. So first of all we're going to open up PowerShell and we'll take it from there with the first command. So first of all we're going to put in a new PS session configuration file and the path where we're going to store that file. Now it doesn't have to be in the default location for the PowerShell that I've selected. It could be somewhere else because you will actually register that location later. Now I'm going to make a couple of tweaks to it. I'm going to change the author so we know who played with this configuration, so me in this case. I'm going to change the session type to restricted remote server. This is the recommended setting as you can see. Uh, I'm going to use the run as virtual account. Now this allows basically the end user to log in with a local account, but it's virtually created. So they can have admin access potentially, but they won't be able to run as themselves. So it does have some restrictions in the network. The next one is to define the role. So I'm defining the role as being part of the lab IBM support group. And the role that I'm assigning to that group is the printer group. Now the printer group is going to be the name of our capability. So once this is done, we go ahead and we're going to create the capability file. So we have an association between the two. And like I said, you could specify the locations, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the default here. So next up, I'm going to create the folder for this is again under the PowerShell directory, but then we're now using modules, uh, just enough administration or JEA and the role capabilities there. Now that's done, we create a new capabilities file using the new PS role capability file and then the path. Now this is kind of important because we are associating this based on role names so the file name is similar to the role name. And next up we're going to make a couple of edits. So we're going to change the visible commandlets and we're going to change the external commands. So First of all, I'm going to change the author. Now we're going to go find the visible commandlets. And this will allow us to change what that user can see. So in this case, I want to give them a couple of permissions. I want them to be able to uh, restart a service, um, but I only want them to restart the spooler service. But obviously, I also wanted to be able to check the service too. So in this case, I want them to be able to use the get services as well to see whether it's running or not. So here we have the get service and we have the spooler as the only valid option. Now, I'm also going to set the uh, visible external commands. Now this can be used for a lot of different things, but in this particular case, I'm going to do it so that I can use the who am I command, which is potentially useful um, if you need to validate whether it's a permissions issue or something else. So that's now effectively saved and closed. Now we need to register this. So before we can go any further, we need to register our PS configuration file. So we register it, we give it the name of the configuration. So this is the association with our previous file. And then we have the file that we used at the beginning, the configuration file. So this is the only part where those two are alike. And you see our configuration file is now registered with our printer name. So just to make absolutely certain that this is live, I'm going to restart the WinRM. And now we're going to give it a tryout and we'll see what it looks like from different users. So first of all, let's look at it as Raj. Now Raj is part of our support group, so he should have access to uh, restart the printers. We also have Howard, who shouldn't, and we also have the admin for behavioral reasons. So first off, if we, see, if we do a new PS session, um, Raj can't do anything. Why? because he's not an admin or any user on that server. But if Raj then specifies the configuration name, so in this case, 
the group that will check and see if that group has membership and if he's a member of which he is and therefore he now has access so he can use that to now get access using the get commands and see what he's able to do so in this case we can see he has the ability to get a service he has the ability to restart a service and if he tries to restart a service that's not the spooler because the spooler is the only one we listed his him being able to restart he will not be able to restart it so let's give it a try shall we so we'll do the get service we get a normal output totally fine we didn't limit him there on the other hand, if we go over and we log in as Howard, we see a very different behavior. So this is our user Howard. Again, he can't access the server by default. We'll set a configuration name. So we're going to go ahead and say, hey, let's use the printer group because that has configuration on the server, right? Well, he's not a member of the support group, so he isn't getting in. So now we've looked at it from the two behaviors, let's look at why this behavior is. So if we pop over to our Active Directory groups a moment, and we go have a look, we'll see that we have our two logins. We have Howard, we have Raj. And in Raj's case, he's a member of the IBM support group. While on the other hand, if we pop over to Howard's configuration, we'll see that Howard is not a member of that group. So he doesn't have permissions to use that configuration because the configuration is set up to use the support group. So if we go back to the look at the configuration file a moment, we'll see that what we did when we set it up at the beginning, we built the association between that group that, and that role. So only members of that group can use that configuration. So if you're not in the IBM support group within our domain, then you can't use the role which is associated with it, which is the printer group. So that's the association there. Now you could build multiple associations with different groups. Now let's look at it from the behavior perspective of the domain admin. So domain admin has access to the server as a server admin. So let's look at the default behavior initially. So if we just go ahead and log into the server, um, and we do this as domain admin, we by default have access to absolutely everything because that's our privileges we, and we haven't specified any config file to tell us differently. So for this point of view, uh, just enough administration is having zero impact in this connection. Now on the other hand, if I try to do that and I give it the configuration name, so we go our printer group again, we'll see a different behavior which is it's going to check and say, hey, you are not a member of this group, therefore you can't actually do this. And that's the behavior that you have differently. And it's good to think of that in mind when you're creating roles if you need your admin to test anything.